Hello, everyone, and welcome to the big show. This is Investing and Trading Live, sponsored by Trading Academy. If you're a first-time listener, thank you for stopping by. I am your host, Josh Lilquist, and we are happy to have you with us today. As always, I have my good friend, my good pal, and he is the one and the only. That was quick, Al. Mr. Al Connix, and how are you doing? You know, I'm doing great. I feel fantastic. How about you, Josh? I'm doing fantastic. It must be all that coffee and that Red Bull and C4 that we're drinking around here. It's like a surplus of that. And the sun shining and the weather being pretty decent. It, it makes you feel a little bit more chipper, as they would say on the streets. A little bit more chipper. in your step. But this is not a weather show. This is a financial show. Trading and investing. And, and we've been doing this this show for several years, Al. We have a lot of fun talking about the financial markets, the do's, the don'ts, how they work, how the conditioning, what the public is supposed to do, quote unquote, or what they're told to do. So hopefully today we can inspire people to understand what is actually going on with those financial accounts, whether they're 401ks, IRAs, and how to make smarter investing decisions moving forward. Our sponsor, Trading Academy, on their 26th year, almost 27 coming up here this summer, teaching people just like you how to trade and invest in the markets, no matter if you're during your working years or during those retirement years. As always, we had another great move in the markets. Uh, broken record, I say that every single week, but it's always a great move because it doesn't matter which way the direction is, you just want the market to move. Fed Powell speaks, uh, or spoke on, was it two Wednesday? or Anyways, there was, some, there was some meeting that went on here this week that had some good volatility. There's always something going on, isn't there? there well, there is, which is a good thing for us. Hey, as long as the market is open, there's usually something there to uh, to move it. Correct, and as the markets have been continuing to chug along to the upside, I think last week I called it the the old uh, mountain climber from from uh, the Price Is Right with Bob Barker. And, yodel, 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 yodel. If people remember that or listening, this is the worst yodeling I've ever heard. Did I? Did we just age ourselves a little bit there, Bob Barker and the and the and Price Is Right? I think the price is right. It's still on, but Bob Barker is not. Obviously. Correct. I believe it's Drew Carey now. But anyways, the market is just continuing to up to the upside. But we did show a little bit of a, a, a hiccup. It doesn't matter because there's opportunities for down markets. What are you seeing with these markets? What are you seeing moving forward, some of the opportunities? But how do you help people make smarter investing decisions? Well, it starts with understanding why the market moves. What causes price to go up? What causes it to go down? And then understanding what the uh, the strategies are and the assets that you can use to take advantage of whatever direction the market goes. And unfortunately for most people, if they are in the market in any any one of the financial markets, the only way they're benefiting is in an up market. Mm-hmm. We call that kind of the long side of the market. Yep. And and that's the way the market has been going. I mean, we the the drivers for this market so far have been what is artificial intelligence. Any company that just mentions the word artificial intelligence... And that's AI to, for short. It, correct. That seems to uh, rock, rocket the market. Uh, the second is optimism for rate cuts. And the third is the consumer activity. Consumer has been very strong. However, last week, Target, uh, in their earnings, they, their profit was up 58%. But it wasn't due to you know, increased uh, sales and increased activity by, by uh, customers. In fact, they, were, they had a dip... 4.4% dip in comparable sales. But what they did say in their forecast was that there's some concern there uh, about the economic challenges that the consumer is, is facing, and so they're expecting lower sales going forward. It, they still had a really good day. I think they were up maybe uh, close to 15% at one point in yeah, time the, during the, the day. the price actually gapped up. It, on Monday when it closed, it was around 150 and it opened up at about 165, yeah. which was about 10%. That being said, Al, we were talking a lot about on the podcast about a nice demand zone back down to between 100 and 110. That it's, it's just been soaring off of, just check, check the archives on that, up 60% since we talked about yeah. that opportunity. Yeah, and what, you, what Josh just mentioned, a demand zone, is one of the things that we use, our students use, to determine when to get into a position and when to get out of a position. A demand zone is an area where there, we have identified institutional buyers, big big traders, big smart money buyers that um, that have kind of tipped their their hand to us. And we know that when that happens, almost never do they get all of their order filled at one time. So we have a way of helping you identify 
when the next part of an order is going to take place. Mm -hmm. it's, it really gets down to the most important thing that there is, and that's identifying the right price to get into something, the right entry price. And, and when we see people come into these workshops, uh, we're hearing a couple of different things. One, some people say, you know what, I, I, I've done really well but I really don't know what I did. I don't know why I did well. Or somebody comes in and says, I just did terrible. I lost a lot of money and I don't know what I'm doing. And the, in both cases, they didn't know what they were doing. And the, and the ones that did, you know, didn't know what they're doing but did well, normally what happens is it disappears. So we talk a lot about protecting that capital and, and keeping that. There's yeah. ways to do that. Exactly. It's called outcome bias. That, that occurs when a, when a trader or investor makes a correct trade but for the wrong reasons or for really no reason at all. And then afterwards, because of that, they kind of convince themselves of their own brilliance. And then that often leads to doing additional trades the same way that end up causing them, uh, costing them money down the road. I so, like that. Conditioning themselves, what do you call it, of, of their own really brilliance? Their own brilliance. Right? I like that. Yeah, you, 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 put, you put a position together, you double your money, you are thinking you're brilliant. You're thinking you're a genius until the market decides that you aren't one. Yeah. But, and you mentioned the demand zone. That's where we're going to identify where to get into a trade. There's also a supply zone, the opposite, yep. where you want to make sure that you, you get out so you protect a profit Correct. or you get out so you don't end up with a, with a loss. Yeah, and we illustrate that a lot more in these investing classes that I'll be giving away seats to in a minute. But you have to have those, those positions where you have an entry point, a target, where to get in and where to get out, because that's how you actually manage your capital the right way. And I like to, see, you know, everybody knows anybody can make money in the markets, but not everybody knows how to keep it. Yeah. When it's going up, exactly. almost anybody can and should make money. And that's why you need strategies with odds in your favor, probabilities, and then a step-by-step -step approach to that. And we really illustrate that in these investing classes on how to make smart investing decisions comfortably, but also confidently with that long-term not long-term strategy, but long-term longevity in the markets, mm -hmm. staying in the markets and being able to have strategies that are designed to, to you know, whatever, whatever your goal or objective is, to do that for a long period of time, not just one time or two times or for six months or something. Being, being able to do that based on short-term accounts or long-term retirement accounts. And that's why we have these investing classes so we can show you what that looks like. So that way you can be the decider of that. You can be the, what do you call it, the, 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 your own brilliance or something like that? <laughs> because Convincing themselves of their own brilliance. There you go. And, and making your own decisions, but having the confidence to, to do that. I want to invite you to an investing class that we do locally all across the, the, actually all across the country, but locally right here in, in Minneapolis. We actually have some sessions at our academy here in Bloomington. We're going to a neighborhood near you, Edina, YZ. We're actually going out to St. Cloud, just other areas to make, to make it easier for you to participate in the financial markets. Text the word investing to the number 210, 210 for two seats for this investing class. One for you and one for a friend. Text the word investing to the number 210, 210. Al, we got an action-packed show coming up here. Stay tuned. This is Josh and Al, Investing and Trading Live. We will be right back.